This video is all about walking the Gemba. It's for beginners and people who want to improve the way they walk the Gemba. We're going to cover what it is, why do it, and ways to do it that maximize benefit and minimize the time it takes. Walking the Gemba is easy to do physically, but hard to do well. I'm going to show you today how to do it well. I'm also going to show you three golden rules that will help transform your relationship with your Gemba and with your people. What does Gemba mean? There's a risk here of getting lost in the weeds of Japanese words and terminology, so I'm going to keep it simple. Gemba actually means the actual place where value is created. On the shop floor in a factory is the easy way to think about it. However, everyone's got a Gemba. Whether you work in a hospital, you work as coding and a developer, there is a Gemba where the actual value is created. And that's what we're talking about walking around today. So what is a Gemba walk? Well, it's spending time with a clear purpose in the area that value is created on the Gemba. It's not management by walking around and it's not just strolling. The key differentiator here is that there is a purpose and we'll get into that. So why walk the Gemba? Well, it's targeted at leaders, ops leaders, ops managers, ops directors, anybody who has a responsibility in the factory at a higher level. And that's because the fundamental purpose is to connect those people who have the power to change things with the actual facts of what's going on in the Gemba. So they know what to change for real benefit. More specifically, there are five reasons for doing a Gemba walk. Firstly, you go and see. You go and see, go look, see Genchi Genbutsu to confirm what's actually happening. Safety, quality, delivery, cost, and people through your own eyes so that you don't lose something in interpretation or get told something that's not quite right. The second reason, confirmation and adherence. So you're confirming what you think is going on is going on. Systems are being followed. You're seeing the right kind of behaviors and that adherence is happening to things like standardized work, 5S, that kind of thing. The third one is to help with problem solving. You're out there actually helping to solve problems. It's not a spectator sport. So you're trying to find Kaizen while you're there. There's also a coaching opportunity here. A number of these gamble walks you should do solo, but a number you can do with somebody else. You can coach one up, one down. One up means you go with somebody who's more senior than you, so you see what their expectation is, a bit of coaching for you, and one down is you coach somebody who works for you. Fundamentally though, any time you spend on the gamble with a purpose, it's gonna coach you anyway. And the final one is that if you're out there, it makes you open to escalation. You've got more chance of finding out things are going wrong earlier, than if you were sat in the office on your ass. And there are some hidden benefits you won't find anywhere written down. Three hidden benefits. The first one is trust. Getting out there frequently means people will start to trust you, trust that you're interested, trust that you're engaged, and they'll start to trust you. So you build the relationship and you deepen the relationship, which means that they'll become more open, they're likely to get better information. And a really interesting one needs managing is that the longer you spend out there, the more frequently, People start to use it as a fishing trip to find out what you know, what they can find out from you. And also you'll get snippets of where your culture is going right or going wrong. You need to be aware of these, the pitfalls of having these conversations, but they're really important inputs for you to know what's going right and wrong. The hidden benefit in this case is that a gamble walk is one of those instances where familiarity doesn't breed contempt. So how do we walk the gamba? This isn't about telling you how to walk. You already know how to do that. It's about the behavior that you demonstrate while you're out there. Three key things here. Firstly, safety rules. Make sure you stick to them. That means not grazing your phone as you're walking. It means not cutting across gangways. It means not going through cells and getting in people's ways. You've got to demonstrate the safety behavior you expect. Do as I do, not as I say. The second point is interruption. Very easy for a manager to bowl into a cell and interrupt somebody working. That's really off-putting. An awful lot of defects accidents happen when something changes, when somebody's disturbed and picks up what they're doing at a different point. So always please observe the one cycle complete thing. That means that when you go to talk to somebody because you've got a question to ask, wait till they finish the product they're on and then ask them. And the final point is be fair. Do your patrols, your gamble walks fairly. Don't have a simple, easy, quick favorite area that you visit all the time. That's not the point. You have to go around the whole area, you might need to bite size it down, but make sure you're fair and you touch everywhere. Really important question is how long it should take. It's a bit of a piece of string on this one. It's that usual lean answer of it depends, but I am going to give you some guidance here. If you're making wings at Airbus or Boeing, that gemba is going to be huge. You're going to struggle to get around that every day and do a good gemba interrogation job. However, if you're working in a small injection molding shop where you've got five machines, 50 tonners, knocking out parts, 
that's going to take seconds, minutes to get around. So make sure you cover everywhere, do it fairly. And I would say 20 minutes is a good time to do a gamble walk. If you're doing a gamble walk, 20 minutes twice a week, that's really, really good start. So what are you looking for? It's probably easier to start with what you're not, not looking for. You're not looking to do a treasure hunt. You're not looking to scout around the shop with eyes on a swivel and try to find five S things out of place. Anyone can do that. It's easy to do. You're going with a specific purpose here. In the same way, you're not looking to give a list afterwards to the team leader, to the manager of 20 things you didn't like. That's just going to be counterproductive. So it depends, but I'm going to give you some options here. I'll give you a couple of quick, simple options, and then I'm going to give you an actual example of some gamble walk training we did with a client that targeted their specific weaknesses. So quick example, if safety is your weakness, then bias your gamble walk towards safety. So when you go out, make sure that gangways are clear, make sure that people are wearing their PPE, look at how people are working and see if they're, they're adhering to the safety rules. Look at how people are moving around the shop, look at how forklift trucks are working. Bias it around the people and the safety behaviors you see and whether the standards are being followed. If standardized work is your concern, you wanna test the strength of that, you could do a lot worse than follow Stephen Spears, four questions to assess good standardized work, which will mean going to various points in the shop where people are working. Remember, wait until they stopped the cycle they're on and asking them the four questions. How do you do this work? How do you know you're doing this work correctly? How do you know the outcome is going to be defect free? And what do you do if you have a problem? They'll uncover everything you need to know about standardized work, escalation and on usage. So here's that example from our client. And in their case, with the whole management team of, I think it was 12 or 13 people, we narrowed down three weaknesses in their business that they wanted to develop their leadership gamble walks on. One of them was confirming current condition. Are things going as we expect them to? The second one, coaching the levels. It was a chance for them to coach and develop their coaching style with their reports. And the third one was because their Kaizen system wasn't working particularly well, harvesting of ideas from people. It was to walk around the shop and confirm that Kaizen ideas are being raised, confirm they're being actioned, and that some are being closed off. So be specific is the answer. And here's that bonus I promised you, the three golden rules I adhere to and I coach to make a gamble walk successful. Firstly, respect the people. Remember that the people out there are the ones that add value. They pay the wages in the business. They are the ones bringing the four M's together or the one P and three M's, people, machines, material, and the method. So make it centric to them, but don't make it oppressive. Don't observe them oppressively and speak to them nicely. Try to spend more time listening than talking. It's not a showboating session. It's for you to get input, to hear things, see things, smell things, to deepen your understanding of what's going on. Secondly, don't walk past. Don't walk past safety concerns and quality concerns. Intervene. I've said it before, it's not a spectator sport. So if you see a problem, get involved. And the third thing is be mindful of time. It's easy to get really interested if you do this occasionally and to spend an hour out there, but one hour occasionally isn't much use because it doesn't form the habit. And we're trying to form that habit to build the relationship between you, the Gemba, and the people on it. So put a limit on the time you spend out there. Be realistic. 15, 20 minutes twice a week is far better than one hour every eight weeks. I guarantee it. To see a gamble walk through the eyes of a sensei, this chapter of Adventures in Leanland brings it to life. Check out the links below. If you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe to help other people find their way to us on their lean journey.